In this video, I'm going to talk about two important things. First, I'll talk about the importance of proofreading your research paper before submitting it for review. Second, I will discuss the common mistakes with figures and tables and what you should do to double check before submission. This video is the second video in a video series where I discuss what you should do before you submit your paper for review. Do check out the other videos in this series. Links is in the description below. I hope you are ready to learn the new tips that I'm going to share you in today's video. If you're ready to learn, just type ready to learn or RTL in the comments below and let's get started. But before we begin, let me introduce myself. My name is Vidhi Potar. I'm an associate professor from Australia. On this channel, I make videos for PhD scholars, postdocs and early career researchers. If you are new here, please subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon and invite your friends to join too. Okay, let's begin. I'll start with the first part that is the importance of proofreading. This is the first and the most important thing. You should get your paper professionally proofread before submission. Now tell me one thing. Do you engage a professional proofreader to read your paper and improve your English before submitting it for review? Answer yes or no in the comments below and be honest. I see many people consider paying for proofreading as an unnecessary expense. But let me ask you, if proofreading was free, would you do it? Of course you would. You know why? Because you know there are some mistakes in your paper that you may or may not have picked up. I guarantee that the proofreaders will find such errors, typos that you may have not found even after reading your paper several times. This is because you read what you want to read, not what is written. This is something to do with human cognition or the brain where we tend to read what we have in our mind rather than what is actually there on the paper. Even I face this problem many a times, which is why I get my papers proofread. Anyway, what I wanted to say is that it's always better for another pair of eyes to go over what you have written rather than the reviewer picking up these mistakes. Ideally, what I want is that reviewers should fall in love with your paper. They should like it so much that they should begin to find reasons to justify your paper that it should be accepted rather than the other way around. Think about the reviewers. They see so many papers and many of them are submitted in a very poor shape. So when they see a nicely written paper, it is a happy moment for them. So always proofread your paper before you submit it for review. After proofreading, the next thing that you should do or look for is figures and tables. You know, which papers I tend to enjoy reading and thereby recommend accepting? It, it's those papers that convey a lot from beautiful figures and diagrams. This is because figures and tables convey a lot of information in a way that is easy to understand. Draw really nice figures in your paper. You should be proud of your work. I like to say that when you submit your paper for review, it should be flawless. It should look as beautiful as you when you went on your first day. Do you remember that moment? What all did you do? All those little things that you thought about. Do the same with your paper. Your paper, like you, should be flawless. See, I never said it's going to be easy. But with any memorable creation, it takes time and dedication to make it perfect. Think about the world's famous paintings. They fetch millions of dollars. These paintings make the artist famous. They are recognized by the work of art. In the same way, you as a researcher should also be known for your research work. Keep that thing in mind. It's not just any other paper. It's your art. It's your creation. Remember that you could become very famous with just one paper. And this could be that paper which you are writing right now. You never know. So every paper that you write, write it to perfection. All right, coming back to the topic of figures. Everyone knows that a picture is worth a thousand words. So make your figure pleasing for the reader. Spend quality time to design beautiful figures. Don't just keep them very bland. Look at the small, small things very carefully. Look at the font that you use. Do you know which font is the best font to use in the figure? If you know, please mention that in the comment below so that others can learn from you. Look at the font color. If you're using a text on a dark background, use white color font. It's that simple. 
Remember to use only one font throughout the paper. Do not keep changing it. I have seen papers where authors have used different fonts and sometimes even the same in the same figure, they have used different fonts. See, this is inconsistency. We don't want that and because consistency is key here. Is your figure blur? That's the biggest killer. And I see it so often in the papers that I read or review. What's the point of having a blurred figure anyway? First, I cannot read anything. It's useless to me. And it goes to show the quality of your work. What is What will the reviewer think about you? Are you so careless or incapable that you didn't even take the effort to draw a figure properly? If this is the image that you want to portray to the reviewer, can the reviewer trust the work that you have been, that you have done in this paper? Do you want to leave that impression? I hope not. There are all these little things that matter. And these are the things that are easily caught by reviewers. Under no circumstance, let the reviewer catch you for these things. Fix it before you submit your paper for review. There are many online platforms where you can draw really nice figures. So use them. Make it catchy. Make your figures really appealing. I draw figures using a website draw.io. You can use that as well. Or if you use something else, please do mention them in the comments below. I hope you're taking notes while listening to this video. Make sure that you share these notes in the comments later. So I can read them and know what you've learned from this video so far. Next, I want to talk to you about tables. Most of the journals will have a standard table format that they use. So there is not much creativity on that front. Hence, what you can show in the table becomes important. So don't cram the table with a lot of information. Make sure that the table is easy to read and easy to comprehend. I often find mistakes in the tables, especially the textual mistakes. Many authors do not pay attention to the text in the table. They probably read their paper thoroughly, but ignore the content from the tables. Make sure you do not make that mistake. If for some reason your paper comes to me for review, I'm definitely going to look for these things. So beware. See, if you have got your paper professionally proofread, then I don't think you will have this issue. But always check your paper, even if it is proofread. I also suggest having a look at other research papers and see how they have structured their tables. It will give you some good idea for your paper. Start taking notes of such ideas when you're reading other papers. I personally take a screenshot and put it in my collection. This way, when I want to see what kind of tables I can draw, then I have those handy. Now let me ask you a simple question. Do you know where to put the table heading? Is it at the top of the table or at the bottom of the table? Leave your answer in the comments below. Another thing that I often find is that the figure or table numbers do not match with the text in the paper. It brings me a smile on my face when I read something like, this figure five shows the layout of the paper. I go looking for the figure five and figure five is either not there or it is completely different. Even my students, are not immune to this. Even after I told them, I still see these mistakes. That's when I say in my mind, see, I told you so. Another thing to keep in mind is consistency. Use one format consistently. Example, don't have the word figure written in many different ways, like figure with a capital F or figure number with a dot at the end or many other options, many other variations that you can see on the screen. Same applies for tables as well. Sometimes I see so many permutations and combinations in just one paper that it is hilarious. I know sometimes the viewer do need to smile, but there could be other ways to entertain them. So remember, just use one format consistently that is well accepted in the academic community. This brings me to another question. Do you know which one of this is the correct format? Leave your answer in the comment box. See, there are many more things like this that you need to address in your research paper. I discuss all these and a lot more in detail in my course. If you want to successfully publish in a top journal, then you must not miss this course. It is a must do for every researcher. If you're interested in my course, please fill up the form below. First 100 people will get an exclusive discount to join my course. See, this is a fully online course, so you can learn it at your own pace. There are six modules and 60 plus lessons with videos, research activities, and writing tasks. If you follow the course, publishing in high quality journals will become very easy. If you have any questions about this course, join my Telegram group so I can answer them for you. Link is in the description below. If you have any suggestions 
or compliments about this video, please leave them in the comments below as I enjoy reading them. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon. I want you to have faith in me and believe that anything is possible if we have dedication, courage and the right guidance. Like I say, believe and succeed. This is all I have to say in this video. Thank you for listening. All the best and I'll see you in my course.